Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin and this is my wife Sarah. Well, we're excited to be doing a video today for you guys about the three mistakes that new pig owners and new homesteaders make when they're raising pigs. Uh, we've been raising pigs for uh, quite a few years here on our homestead. In fact, we raise all of the meat that we eat here uh, and we've been uh, completely free from store-bought meat for about the past seven years. So today we're gonna be doing this video for you guys, uh, but we're also doing this as part of a collaboration with three other amazing YouTube channels. Uh, they're all gonna be doing the same topic, but about different animals. The channel Keeping It Dutch will be doing a video about hair sheep. Arms Family Homestead will be doing a video about goats. And Jason from Coghill Farm will be taking on chickens. So if you've come from one of those channels to find us, thank you so much. We're glad that you found us. Uh, we hope that you'll enjoy your channel while you're here. If you're one of our normal subscribers and you don't know about those other channels, we'll make sure we leave links to all of their videos and channels below. Uh, check them out, they're really great channels. Uh, but let's get down to business. Let's start talking about pigs. mistake that we want to talk about for first-time pig owners is choosing to buy breeding pigs first rather than just buying some feeder pigs to learn off of. We had a big decision, that big decision to make when we were first-time pig owners and it was a hard decision to make. Yeah. Uh, but honestly we chose to raise two feeder pigs the very first time just so that we could get to know pigs, learn about the behavior, how much they eat, all that kind of thing, so that we could then, if we decided in the future, go ahead and raise and breed our own pigs, we could. So far, uh, we're about seven years into raising pigs, and we've yet to breed our own. Uh, we enjoy just buying some baby piglets uh, every year and raising those up to a size where we can process them. Um, and at this point, we just don't feel a need to uh, have pigs year round and all that responsibility that comes along with breeding your own. And we're not saying you shouldn't do that. Uh, what we're saying is you shouldn't do that on your very first time. You need to know pigs first. You need to get to understand how big they are. Uh, they're an intimidating animal, um, not because they're mean or anything like that, but they are just a big, heavy animal and strong and, and strong so you need to make sure that it's what you want on your homestead you can play with the bag they're like kids on christmas they'd rather have the bag than what was inside you guys are crazy are crazy. So the second mistake that a lot of new pig owners make is inadequate fencing. Uh, we use two types of fencing on our homestead. One for when they're little, for their little piglets, and another when they get bigger and we move them out into the woods like we have these pigs now. When they're little, we start them in a regular pen. We start them with uh, what are called hog panels. Uh, they're designed specifically for holding in hogs. They're a heavy metal panel. They come in 16 foot length. And uh, we just use those along with some T-posts uh, spaced every eight feet to keep them in. If you put enough T-posts, those panels work great for keeping in hogs even when they get big. Uh, we choose though to move them out to the woods where it's not really practical to use those types of panels over a large area, which is why we choose to use electric fence when they get bigger. I think one thing that people underestimate with pigs is how strong they are and how much weight they have behind them as they grow. The hog panels are designed specifically to be able to withstand that weight. And pigs, once they get a mind of their own and want to go somewhere, they're hard to control and move back to where you want them. Uh, you can actually see a video that we did where we made a big mistake uh, right up here, where we were actually, when we moved our pigs from their pen into the woods, 
uh, they actually escaped and ran away. I don't want you guys to go through that as well. So once they're out in the woods, what we use is a two strand electric fence. Um, even though pigs are very big and heavy and strong, they're probably one of the easiest animals to control with the electric fence. Uh, we only use two strands, and the tallest strand is only about a foot off the ground. Pigs, because they naturally walk with their head down, they're rooting around on the ground, uh, will run into the electric wire easily with their nose, which is very wet, and they'll get a good shock. Now we train them on the electric wire while they're still in their pen uh, with the hog panels. The reason you do that is because when they hit the wire, you want them to learn that they need to back up, not run forward. So you train them for a couple weeks in their pen before you move them, and that way once they're out in the woods, honestly, they don't even get near the wire. They're afraid of it even when they're very big. Uh, but if they do hit it, uh, which they do sometimes on accident when they're not looking where they're going, uh, they know that they need to back up to get away from it. We actually learned this system from Joel Salatin at Polyface Farms. He had a, a series that you could purchase a while back, uh, several years ago, uh, a video series on how to raise pigs in the woods. Um, and that's where we got the idea for the system that we use. And we're super happy with the way it works. Uh, we use it off of a solar powered generator so that uh, we don't have to have electric running out here by the pig, uh, and the solar generator just works great. So uh, that's our advice, is make sure you have adequate fencing for your pigs, and make sure you have that planned out before you get your pigs, so that you know what you're going to do with them once you get them. I brought you some treats. want to talk about is not having a plan for butchering. So we actually made this mistake when we were first starting with pigs uh, and really there's kind of two mistakes in one here. Uh, <laughs> the first is uh, not knowing where you're going to take them but the second one is not knowing how you're going to get them there <laughs> and we made both mistakes. The very first time we raised pigs we used a processor who would actually come and pick them up and when we called, they were able to get us in like within a couple days. So it wasn't a big deal. So the next time we raised pigs, we assumed we'd have a similar experience. So the second time we raised pigs, we thought, hey, no big deal. Uh, the pigs are ready. They'll be able to come and pick them up in three days and everything will be perfect. Well, we called them and they said, here's the situation. It's elk season. And so we're booked for six weeks. Uh, however, if you can bring the pigs to us tomorrow at 7 a.m., we'll be able to do them tomorrow. Otherwise, you need to wait six weeks. Not only that, we can't come and pick them up, so you'll have to transport them yourself. We didn't have a trailer. We didn't know what we were doing. We had never loaded a pig before. Right. But we couldn't wait six weeks. These pigs were huge. Yeah, so it was a big ordeal. We ended up having to, you know, uh, borrow a trailer from someone and we didn't know how to get the pigs in the trailer <laughs> and they escaped and we chased them all over. We should have and, had a YouTube channel then because that would have been oh a great gosh, video. It was a disaster. Um, but that just shows that you need to know up front uh, about when the pigs are going to be ready so you can look like here in Missouri uh, forget about taking pigs in during deer season because every butcher is booked up. Uh, now we've actually gotten to the point where we do them ourselves uh, which has is going to work out great because we can kind of do them on our own time schedule when we're ready. Uh, so that will save us a lot of headaches when we get to the end of the pigs this time. But assuming that you're going to be taking them to someone to be processed, you need to have that all lined up uh, ahead of time. In fact, they should even be able to tell you all the different cuts that they offer and everything and you can figure that all out before you ever take them to a butcher. So there you have it, the three mistakes that we think you should try to avoid when you start out with pigs. Now, on a positive note, because we don't want this whole video to be about mistakes, uh, we think pigs are actually one of the easiest animals to raise on the homestead, and really, 
they're one of our favorites. Uh, they give you a lot of meat in a very short amount of time. They're fun to raise. They're, they're very personable animals. <laughs> uh, we love raising pigs. So uh, don't take any of these tips as discouragement from doing it. Uh, we encourage you to get some pigs and try it out for yourself because they're a blast and you will have a great time raising them on your homestead. We also encourage you guys to check out the channels that are in this collaboration with us. Fantastic channels, you guys. If you're not subscribed to them yet, you need to go over there right now and sub all those channels because they're really great. Hey, if this is your first time visiting our homestead, thank you so much for finding us. Uh, we hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Uh, to all of our traditionalists who come back five days a week for all of our new videos, we sure do appreciate you guys. Head on over and check out those other channels. And don't forget to share this video with anybody you think would enjoy it on your social media. And until next time, thanks for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.